Hey, hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Girls Amusement Academy. Uh, this is episode number 18. Uh, today's theme is Made in China. If this is your first time joining us here, welcome in, welcome in. Thank you for coming along. Um, I am a real life theme park designer who enjoys playing Roller Coaster Tycoon and um, I like building realistic roller coasters, so I figured that uh, I could teach how to build realistic roller coasters in the game, and so we do. Each week we pick a different theme and do nine different example coasters of that genre, and then take you know chat suggestions or uh, extras that we think would also fit, and uh, do those too. So today's theme, as I said, is made in China, so we are doing Chinese-built roller coasters, from Chinese manufacturers. This is definitely a an area that has exploded in the recent, say, 10 years or so. Um, so there's a lot of different things to choose from. What I tried to do is pick things that were unique layout-wise to China. Uh, one of them is not, but um, tried to pick some unique ones in here. So there's something maybe a little more interesting than clones of Western-built rides. So what we're doing today is nine different roller coasters. So the uh, coasters of choice this time around, uh, the first one is going to be the Jipao Six Ring Roller Coaster. Then we'll have the Beijing Shibalai Jet Coaster. Then stick with Beijing Shibalai for their standard inverted coaster. Then we'll go over to the Golden Horse uh, Custom Inverted Coaster. We'll look at the Changlong Small Roller Coaster. The Golden Horse Inverting Spinning Roller Coaster the uh, Hebei Metallurgical 11 Inversion Roller Coaster, Golden Horse's Drop Coaster, and finally Golden Horse's Tilt Coaster. Um, and then I've also got a couple other things that we may take a look at as well, just based on time. So, as we always do, let's uh, go ahead and start out in the coaster database and take a look at this. So this is the Jipao Six Ring Roller Coaster. Um, the first thing you may note is that they miscounted. So it's called the Six Ring Roller Coaster, but there are five inversions, actually. Two loops and three corkscrews. So the, the basis of this is it essentially follows the standard loop screw type layout. So you've got your station, you've got a 180 degree curve, you've got your uh, lift hill there. Oh, hello, things on tracks. Welcome in, how are you today? Thank you for joining. Uh, so you got your lift hill up here, another 180 turn, straight drop, two loops. A low turnaround here and three corkscrews in a row. So this is the triple cork uh, element here. Now Aerodynamics did it first on Fantasia Special in Taiwan. Uh, it has since been copied here and there are actually a couple of these. So there are now 12 of these across uh, China. Um, this is the one that we're looking at here because it's got pictures for it. I've seen other, other photos uh, from different ones but these are the easiest to pull from. Uh, so you'll see reasonably steep first drop, not too, too bad. Um, standard kind of loop element here. Some pretty hefty lattice supports all the way around if you're a fan of custom supports in the game uh, and all of that. Uh, so I was able to find a uh, manufacturer video from this. They do. Um, the only thing is that this one doesn't have a helix. So I, I'm a little bit confused as to where the sixth, unless it's the entire circle of... The circuit counts as the sixth ring. I, I don't quite know. Um, initially, I was going to do the three ring uh, roller coaster, which has a helix, a loop, and a corkscrew, which makes more sense. But this one's just, I don't know, a little bit confusing to me. Before we get into it, too, I, the, I feel like Chinese knockoff coasters, as they are typically called, get a pretty bad rap. I mean, the, they are built largely on stolen technology, but... The Chinese coaster industry has advanced like two decades in maybe five years or so and are actually doing some pretty interesting, cool stuff now with custom layouts and all of that. So, you know, I rode a number of Chinese coasters while I was over in China and they were varying quality. Uh, certainly some of them are not very good, but I think they're getting to the point where they can stand up against European counterparts. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, I give it the benefit of the doubt for sure. And... We're going to just take these as they go, as their own entities and not necessarily the American or European knockoffs of them. Um, the one thing that they tend to do is their loops are pretty darn intense. They're either really circular or they're really, really low. 
Hey, Coaster Joss, welcome in. Welcome in, how are you today? And that that is the thing, is they're getting their iterations in, and, and the thing is, is that they're cheap, so they can crank out so, so many of these really, really fast. Um, so anyway, there's our, our video there. So let's, um, let's go back and see if we can build one of these. The biggest challenge we're going to run into here is that we don't have a diagonal corkscrew. So we're going to have to get a little messy with it, which is fine. Uh, we can make that happen. All right. So. First things first. Hey Rob, welcome in. Yeah, I've been binging Ask a Mortician on YouTube for the past like week or so. She's fantastic. Like such such good content. All right, so we're gonna start with a pretty big uh, turn out here because we're gonna try and drop this inside. Maybe they count the corkscrews as four rings measured from the bottom. It could very well be. <laughs> it is always over deadlines that you binge it, isn't it? All right. And then the one thing that these have that are different from a lot of the Chinese coasters is um, they don't really have a lot of banking, or their banking is a little bit suspect. So we can bank this, and I think we will go ahead and do it. But um, some of them don't. So... Uh, actually, what we can do is go back through here and let's level this out a little bit. Their their ride is very stretched, or rides in general. Um, so we'll level it out like that. And then I will put a loop here, which is going to be probably way too fast. back the other way okay actually this is this is okay because what I saw on the one that we were looking at earlier is there's actually a pretty good runway to that lift so we can do something like this instead and make it work And then we'll just come up to this. And actually, if you wanted to be realistic, just don't bank this corner at all, because that's kind of how the real the real one is. It's uh, it's pretty pretty wild as far as that goes. Um, and now we're gonna get in here and do something maybe a little bit weird, because we're gonna give it an S bend there, just to bring it in a little bit. This is the uh, so we can do a couple things. We can either do the corkscrews like this, or you can do what I like to call the Robbie 92 2 by all method, and you can put in S bends in between them. Obviously, this stretches it out quite a lot, but it also keeps them in line, whereas they would typically be diagonal. So really, you ought to come in here at the diagonal and then go one, two, three in a row. Uh, but it, it doesn't necessarily work that way all the time. So we're going to just go ahead and do, I'm going to bring it along this way. Um, what I'm going to do true too is try and stretch this out just a little bit more. Um, and that way I can at least kind of bank this a little bit. If we wanted to bank it, we don't have to. But it also stretches it out a little bit because I want to push this out a little ways. And over here we can be working on our station, which is going to be enough for six corkscrew cars. We'll use the standard corkscrew trains. So we probably need one more because there are awfully large trains in the game. Just fine there. Put a gap here, put our block brakes. We can run two trains, 
Um, Chinese coasters are kind of a toss up as far as they go in offering um, multiple trains. Half of the parks that I went to in real uh, when I was there didn't even use the second train, so it's not a huge, huge thing. I actually am. Uh, I think about this going to unbank this because it's more realistic. That this is unbanked, uh, which is a little bit shocking to say. But if we jump back here a little bit, you can see this entire drop is pretty much not banked at all. So it's it's a little shocking, perhaps. Um, you know what? Let's kind of rethink this. Back it up again. Drop it down. And then just unbank this. It will go right up to the edge. Corkscrew, corkscrew. I would have to imagine, Mr. Ghibli, that your uh, neck hurts pretty badly after this one. Uh, there, there were a couple of neck beaters that I rode uh, for sure. Uh, it's, uh, it was not some of the most comfortable things that I have, have done in as far as coasters go. But honestly, some of the coasters have not been too too bad. Welcome in, Jay Moore. Uh, and then actually just to continue, we're just going to not do, let's see how fast this goes. We can always add, if we want to add some banking in here. Oh, am I too high? I am too high. So we will up, go down, and then do that. Other thing I'm going to do once we let's do two trains here. I will if this for whatever reason Chinese coasters and Japanese coasters tend to have awfully slow lift hills, so we can slow that down. And I'm also going to go in here and uh, rides list. Uh, the mock restraints are pretty good. Pretty good time. All right, what am I looking at? This is Corkscrew Roller Coaster 1. This is 004. Let's check real quick under the ride stats. Okay, so the mass is about 500 or so. Let's take a look. I'm thinking about reducing the mass to make this a little bit slower since we got a pretty big drop here on a pretty small coaster. Um, so let's take a look and see how it runs and what we might want to do is get in here and reduce the mass so that it runs a little more accurately true to life although to be fair that's actually not that far off there this is a little fast so let's do ride set mass Zero zero four. Let's go with three hundred and see what happens. Okay, we're already in better shape. Thirty seven forties. It's still a little bit fast, but it honestly doesn't look too bad. Let's see here. Our real one is yellow and light blue. We'll call it that. And then a lot of these have the uh no, just the um just the mass. I don't believe that friction is an option at the moment. I think it is just um I think if I remember right, it's just the, the mass that you can do. I would like friction. Be very nice if we could. Then we're gonna do red, white, and blue on these for whatever reason. Um, a lot of the uh, ones from this company and eBay 
have this standard color train, which was like red, white, and then a blue at the bottom, not necessarily the seats, which I guess we can make. I don't know why I changed that. All right, so there's our first one. Pretty, pretty straightforward, but there's numero one. We will call that one a day. All right, so to move on, let's take a look at our next one, which we're going to jump over to the company Beijing Shibolai Amusement Equipment, uh, who have made, they're probably the second biggest name in Chinese coasters after Golden Horse, who we'll get to here soon. Um, Beijing Shibolai kind of did the first of the inverted coasters over there, and they've done a bunch of other interesting ones. So this is the only one that's based on a knockoff of sorts. Uh, this is a jet coaster, and there's two of them, although rumors are that maybe this one was moved to the other one, uh, to the other location. This is actually a copy of a ride called Odin Express, which operated in Japan um, for a number of years prior. And there were some rumors, actually, that this was the coaster, that it was taken down, moved here, put back together by Beijing Shibolai, which is why their name is on it and redone. So it very well could be that uh, these folks had pulled this one from from there and put it here and then added the new production date for it. But that's not, not confirmed for, for sure. Um, so we have this overall look. And actually, there is a POV of this, thanks to uh, Maya P.A. Masane, uh, who we're going to take a look at right now. So what's interesting about this one, and, and leads to believe that they pulled this information from a um, from a uh, outside designer or outside inspiration, is that the guide wheels are on the outside of the track, which is what you don't see on a lot of the early Chinese coasters. So this one being 2012, which is sort of sort of towards the early days of the Chinese theme park boom. Um, that means that there's definitely some some instance from somewhere else. Some interesting anti rollbacks there on either side of the lift hill that you can see. Your wind gauge there. If you're building a realistic park, throw in a wind gauge. Uh, my sources for rumors for this for this one. Um, I'm trying to remember. It's been a while. Um, I might have to get back to you on that one, actually. Um, I don't know if you spend time on uh, Vertical Horizons, VH Coasters. Uh, he's he's only on Facebook now, um, but he and I are good friends, um, and we share a lot of information back and forth, and he had found a little bit on this a while back um, when we were going through uh, the Japanese kind of coaster binge. Um and that was kind of where I, I got some of it. And then some of it was just kind of scouring websites and translating them and things like that. So you notice with this coaster, there's not a whole lot yet on, as far as excitement goes, but it's, you know, reasonably smooth, reasonably interesting. It, they kind of call it a big family coaster. Hey, Vyuan. How are you doing today? Welcome in. So there's a second lift hill for some reason. It's a small little lift hill, but again, copying from the original um, design, which was in uh, in Japan, which I'll, I'll pull that up here real quick after we finish this one. But reasonably smooth. I mean, there's some strange transitions, kind of like that one there, but on the whole, it, it's not too bad. We're not doing anything too big, nothing too fast, but it's kind of getting the job done. And a weird little climb here into the brakes and back down. But what, uh, let me pull up. So Odin Express at uh, Kurashiki uh, Tivoli Park. As you, as you can see here, this is lift one, this is lift two that's right next to it. It is the same layout and a very similar support pattern. So kind of interesting to see all of that. Um, 
this one was relocated here as bullet train and uh, so actually there's where I got my mistake done so I need to correct what I said earlier it was relocated but it wasn't that one it was this one um, and it's also which is very interesting too because this one's got a production date listed as 2013 So very interesting how how that all works. So we'll back ourselves up to this one again, and let's jump back in and see what we can do with it. We're gonna go ahead and use the looping coaster track slash train because I think it's gonna be the best option for us here. Uh, Depending on how high we want to go, we can, you know, you notice the one that we watched the video of was terrained. Uh, we'll just do. Well, an aerial on my other side. The supports are very nice. You know, they have that kind of good good lattice feel to them and everything. Okay. All right. We're going to stretch this out. And we don't need to go too tall since we have that second lift hill, so no reason to worry there. We don't need to recreate this thing exactly, so we'll we'll do something sort of similar. We could, if you'll notice on one of the hills, it did have a shift in the um, curvature of the, the drop. So we by doing this drop here where we come in, uh, like we would do a smooth drop on the orthogonal plane, it always looks a little funky and diagonal, but it actually would work here because that's what the real thing does, uh, more or less. level ourselves off up a little bit it was at 55 earlier so we'll stick with this one two three ideally I'd like to be over but it's a nice smooth coaster um i think you can kind of design it almost like you would a take a schwartz cough and make it way less intense and that more or less kind of fits the bill here Which, you know, it's maybe somewhat sacrilege to say that yeah, it's sort of like a Schwarzkopf, but it is. It, it really has a similar overall look to it. Hey, McAndy, how are you? Welcome in. We can do a little bit of an airtime hill here, which is just slow enough that it should get us a little bit of... A little bit of float on there. Actually, we can go ahead and test this. Let's test it with a five car train. I don't think we're going to go ahead and have to adjust the pacing at all, but we'll give it a try. Yeah, it's sort of like a not as not as good Leesburg banana. 
Yeah, good to have you back. Thank you for coming in. We are doing Chinese coasters today. So, we're trying to do some kind of more Chinese built layouts with a reasonable smoothness to them. And and I'm trying to do more of the um standard type Chinese layouts but not copies of western layouts. Okay, so we're cruising here pretty slowly through there, which is fine. That's kind of what we wanted. I'm actually going to come through at this height. What do we need to clear for that second lift tilt? I don't know if we can clear it. Why on... Surprisingly, that'll get there. I'm guessing if I do one more, I can't. Okay. Yeah, it definitely has some has some jank in there. It's uh, not the not quite the most smooth, but actually not as awful as it could probably be. Give it one on the flat. Off that chain. No oh, shoot. Alright, let's try this then. We have to take off the chain. Drop to So this is the kind of thing that in general building coasters I would in RCD I never ever 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 advocate for a banked straight section just as a one off unless you're making it a really wide corner where you're going to throw these in between a bunch of things I really never advocate for that but here it it can kind of work again not my favorite but uh the other thing that we could do if we don't want to do that entirely is just go like this which might honestly be better Get ourselves a helix in there. And at 15, we are well shy of any concerns we need to have for clearances here. For that one. Part of what makes those supports uh, interesting, like Greg Lou pointed out earlier, is the track is stacked, so you can easily run underneath of them. Um, so the best way to do that would actually be to get underneath of this one, although looking at the aerial, it doesn't have that. But if I was building this as for a Western um, built coaster, I would try and get this piece of track right here to line up right underneath the first drop, and then you can stack it. Then it's just two columns with two beams, and that takes care of the whole thing. And you notice the one thing that I have not used here at all is the diving corners. Um, it's tough because I really like to use those, and I but I just don't feel like that look is quite right for what we're going for here. All right, now we can have either a helix here or I like to have it come up and into that final. Do one more. We can have it have a reasonably quick finale. All 
All right. Put our block breaks in. We'll use we'll use two trains again. Um, not to say that the Chinese built one wood, but have that pretty decent sized runway here coming up to the break run. There's always more flat track than you think there ought to be. Okay. So these the Schwarzkopf trains in game are probably the best looking ones for this. Um, you could go different one in the example where where is the example? In the example, I was actually using um, the Gerslauer wooden coaster trains that Space K had made um, since the design was looked a little flat, but uh, this may be a better look. All right. Yellow and yellow and some kind of green. They have nice slow things here. Typically, I would bank this extra one as I tilt it down, but I'm not going to here since these tend to roll out of the banking a lot more quickly. I actually see what this hits this section right here at and put a break just to catch that. I did unbank this section of the train one is getting to right now, but I don't think. We need to. Hi, Zachary Twitch. Welcome in. How are you? Let's see what the speed is here. It is 30, 25 or so. so let's go ahead and drop a break there at. Uh, let's break it at 22. It really didn't hold that much. Uh, but we can see what that looks like. And this lift hill didn't look, you know, remarkably slow on the POV. Not fast, but I think this, what is this, four miles an hour? Yeah, I think that feels fine. And the only last thing that we'll do here is add back a chain piece just on the drop on that side just to make it look a little bit nicer. Actually, it seems to smooth that out just a little bit more. Now, granted, we don't get this guy off the lift hill quite as quickly, but in normal operations, you'd want to up your dispatch time here just so it leaves a little bit later than you would otherwise do. Let me pull this out. Oops. Didn't even click it. There we go. And then we'll call this one number two. And that is our jet coaster from Beijing Shibulai, which is copied from something originally made uh, in Japan by uh, Yusuke. Yusuke. Okay, so two out of nine. Next up, we are going more towards the big guns here. Let's go back to our Coaster database here. So, inverted coasters. China had inverted coasters before a Chinese manufacturer came and built them. Vacoma was the first one to put them over there. Um, they built a loop with Cobra Roll and Zero G Roll at Tabuelli in Shenzhen um, way back in the early 2000s. That came to be cloned at Flamingoland in the UK as Kumali. Um, Kumali was often mistaken as the first of its kind of uh, that layout, but it was actually Happy Valley Shenzhen who had it first. That layout has since been copied a number of times in uh, China, in some cases with an extra helix added to it, uh, in some cases just kind of as the standard. But the first of the uniquely Chinese layouts was this guy here. So this is Shenzhou Coaster, and this is at Beijing Shenzhen Park in Beijing. Uh, it's actually standing but not operating as of last year, so I don't know if it's done for now or not. Um, these rides typically don't last very long, some of, especially the early Chinese rides. Um, so 2005 to now is actually a pretty 
decent length of time for one of these coasters to be around, um, unfortunately. You can see, if you look at the track bending, this is not one of the finest works of uh, Chinese manufacturing. So you can kind of see how um, suspect this is right here. Um, but <laughs> Danny but not operating is the word of the week for uh, my park, which I have just recently released on New Element. Uh, if you are interested in seeing that, I will be doing a video for it here in a week or two. Um, has a number of standing but not operating rides. Here you can get a better shot of those corkscrews, which leave a lot to be desired. And I do extinct coasters, including the Schiff Wild Mouse. I do have a Wild Mouse stream uh, included at some point. Um, I just have not gotten a chance to figure out when I'm going to do it just yet. So it will be sometime. It may not be the next one, um, but it'll be soon, I think. I've got two or three streams ready to go, um, but I do want to take a look at that. Um, you can see there, I don't believe there's a transfer track on this, so it is a single train operation. Um, but the, the interesting thing with this one is this is a fully custom layout uh, for China, which was then copied by a couple of different manufacturers. Mostly Beijing Shinsan, or uh, Beijing Shibalai has done this, but there's been a couple other ones who have done similar. It's got a loop, an airtime hill, and an Immelman, followed by a helix, two... Um, sort of kind of roll, sort of kind of corkscrews, and then a helix, and then that's it. Uh, but, and actually, I wish I would have gotten this ahead of time, but let me see if I can pull up really quick. Hang tight. Please stand by. Uh, that airtime hill was not always an airtime hill. It was actually a zero G roll initially. And it didn't work out. Uh, so we're gonna, let me change this image real quick to, if I can find it. Alright. So, it was a zero G roll back in the day before it got modified into an airtime hill. And I don't know if it, I clearly it operated with the zero G roll at some point, but it doesn't seem to, there doesn't seem to be much footage or anything out there of this actually operating. What I find maybe even more interesting though, is that it was redone uh, into the airtime hill, but slightly banked. So you can still see the weird supports that were just kind of scabbed on to make this do its thing. Uh, so very, very interesting as far as coaster history goes. Uh, there's actually a fair bit of um, precedent for things like this in China where it's been adjusted kind of as the as the ride has since gotten built. Um, so very interesting to see how it worked. And amazingly enough, this is one of those things that you typically see happen and then close like two years later or right away because it just never operated. But this operated for a while with this airtime hill in it. And a number of enthusiasts have ridden this because it was in Beijing, so it was relatively easy to get to. So very kind of odd, oddball stuff. Um, I don't have a POV of this one. I, I also didn't look very hard, so um, could be that there, I'm sure there is one out there. But instead, we're going to look at Hanging Roller Coaster, which is a Crab Island Resort. Uh, this is a version 1, um, not, not UV1 if you're still here, but version 1 model of the, um, the prototype, which we were just looking at. There's also a version 2 model, which looks a little bit better, um, a little bit smoother overall. Still not ideal, but a little bit better. But this one is sort of your typical, typical overall design for a... Um, Chinese built inverted coaster with the standard layout. So let's take a ride on this one. I can't remember if I just said it or not, but this one was also just recently demolished as they are looking to make way for something else here, I guess. As it turns out, Chinese coasters have a very short lifespan in a lot of instances. Um, a number of the rides that I rode in 2014 are already gone. Low lift hill, as to be expected. Yep, 
Yeah, the loop supports are awfully intense. There's there's a lot going on on some of these. So if you're doing custom supports in the game, they're uh, they're a little fun to recreate. All right, so let's take a ride on this thing. <clears throat> Look for that fun banking. Real high banking actually here before we level out into the loop. Uh, the prototype levels out a little bit later. Uh, this one decides to pull out. So now we have a fully straight airtime hill, which is not great on an inverted coaster if you ever had the chance to do it. Um, then we're going to hang to the side here for a little while, then roll through this corner before we're going to unnecessarily bank very early right here, almost on our sides, uh, and then we're going to roll over. Roll over once more, nearly stalling out. And then we're going to work our way through this helix and take in our time. Thankfully, we don't need to get out and push because we are all done right about here after some kind of janky coverage there into the brakes. There you have it. This looks better than SLCs in my... <laughs> Have you ridden a lot of bad SLCs? There are actually okay SLCs out there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, I, love, <laughs> I love the implication that they did this in Excel. <laughs> That's my absolute favorite uh, part of that. <laughs> so let's... Uh, <laughs> Uh, we need to mention that to our coaster manufacturers I work with. Uh, all right, let's go back to the game and uh, let's take a look at this. So we're going to use the compact inverted coaster um, to somewhere in here. There it is. All right. Put this almost on the ground, and this may be one that we also adjust the mass to just so it operates a little... Like the real thing. Uh, okay, let's see here because we're probably pretty high up actually. Uh, right, more than we need to be, but let's. They might have, although they probably didn't do a very good job or missed a formula because a lot of these parks are not doing so hot. All right, let's. Uh... There's really not a good way to do these layouts. Um, if you've ever downloaded 2 by Owl Action Park on New Element, which is one of my favorite parks, um, and a park I lost to in Head to Head, um, Robbie has done an incredible version of one of these um, that looks really, really nice. Um, so kind of defer to him on some of those. Ideally, I'd like to get down there more quickly. question is, do I want to go... Hmm. Let me pull up some photos of this just to see if I can get away with a steep drop. I really can't. I can kind of I can probably get away with it like this. Although that almost looks too too okay for a Chinese build coaster. You know what? We're gonna roll with it. Let's let's do that. It gives us some space to work through our rest of this. Uh, let's go ahead and oh, get our trains right. A, do a couple of different kinds. I've seen um, seen eight car trains, but we're actually going to use a ten car train on this, which is really why we're going to have to probably adjust our speed on this. Especially with that airtime hill as big as it is. 
Oh, good luck on your studies. Enjoy, uh, enjoy all that. Hopefully it's not too full crushing. Uh, but, uh, thanks for coming by. Appreciate you watching and good luck on those. So let's, let's try it like that. See if it get, flies over there. It should look a little bit, uh, a little bit janky there. I'll have the rest of it up on YouTube, as, as always, once we're done. Okay, so the loop's doing pretty good. Pretty quick airtime hill. Oh, that's actually going to be perfect, perfect, perfect. If we can get over top of this. Uh, we cannot. But that drop is actually okay here. Now it's just a matter of trying to figure out how to get up and over. There we go. We do right? Yeah. So I'm going to do inline twists. They're kind of halfway between an inline twist and a corkscrew, so I feel like you can kind of go either way. Um, it's up high enough that I'm hoping it's going to go pretty slowly through these. It is. Then, as far as this final helix goes, let's see what the best way is. Finish that. And the real thing kind of walks around for a little bit over here, or hitting those brakes. And there is only the one train, you don't need to worry about blocks. All right, so that's not necessarily close to the real thing, but it's close enough that we're gonna we're gonna go with it. And if we're gonna try and copy the colors of the real one, it's sort of green and purple of some kind. It's not a great look. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, it would be really nice to have uh, actual banked dropping corners on on these, just because it, it doesn't look doesn't look right um, without them. I mean, I get that they were meant to be a little bit more shallow, or actually, I don't know. I, I really don't know why. I don't have a good answer as to why they didn't include them initially. So I think that's that's kind of where we're gonna leave it at this point not that i'm quite happy with this but it'll it'll work so all that number three Ooh, here we go all right so we're going to stick with inverted coasters for one more um, and what i want to do on this one is look at a couple of different things so we're going to end up looking here at happy angel um, but before we do that, 
Golden Horse did a couple of suspended coasters. Um, they did. Uh, let's see here, all model uh, suspended coaster. So they did one, two, three, four, five, six different models of suspended coasters over the years. Um, this is a newer version that's uh, pretty much a custom design. You'll notice a couple things. Uh, guide wheels on the outside, uh, which is pretty cool. And the fact that this one is fully custom, uh, it's a really short ride, actually. It's got a pretty steep drop here into um, two kind of quick inline twists. So you get the zero G roll of sorts and then an inline twist on the backside, and that's about it. But it's got this kind of cool overbanked corner, pretty hefty support structure there, too. But you know, nicely done. And there's two of these. I guarantee you there's going to be more. Then they also went and copied the Revershawn, uh Hanging Wild Mouse Ride. I mean, actually, these have been in China for a long time. And while there's only the one Revershawn, they've sold seven of those. Oh, thank you. Thank you for calling. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, yeah, all right. Well, I missed that one. That's a reverse one. Usually we do the drink if you can't get to, or if I'm stuck here in RCT, but uh, I just got, got ahead of myself. So let's back, let's back up, back in and up. All right, we'll start back to here. <laughs> and, uh, so this is the one that I was talking about earlier that has, uh, the guide wheels on the outside. It's got two rolls, uh, very kind of nicely put together. Um, a pretty nice looking, looking ride. And then they they went and did these copies of the the Revershawn hanging wild mouse, which looked pretty bad considering, first of all, considering their faces, which don't look like they're having the best of time, and just considering how generally poor the reviews are for the one in Europe. I can't imagine that this one is going to be a whole lot better. So, move along from that. And then from there, they did 22 of the copy of the original Vacoma in China, which has the great uh, diving drop, a low corner, a loop, there's a cobra roll off to the left, and then we've got the zero G roll, a helix here, and then into the brakes. Some of these have an extra helix but those are one of the bigger, better-selling models. They've sold 22 of these, which is pretty impressive. Um, 20D is what we're about to look at. And then the next one here is the similar model to this, just with the um, new track style. So the guide wheels are on the outside, so it looks a lot better. Look at this view, though. Absolutely stunning. Pretty incredible look, and then these sort of you know, derpy dinosaurs, but uh, still pretty cool. Nicely looking Cobra roll. Um, and actually, it all looks pretty darn smooth here, um, which is kind of why I say that China is slowly improving on the overall design. Um, you look at that zero G roll, and it actually, you know, looks like a respectably shaped zero G roll. So the hope is, I think for all of our sakes, that their coasters are getting a little bit better. But beautiful looking ride. Another short, short layout, of course, but not too bad. All right, we'll go back one more. And then the last one is they've done an indoor coaster. Here, and you'll notice here at the bottom, there's a just a roll, kind of heartlined roll right in the middle, and it's actually heartlined. So not too bad as far as that goes. A little slow. You watch the video of it. There's a roll here right in the middle. Yeah, not not too bad. That one's at one of the Sunak parks. But we are going to go back and take a look at D here, which is Happy Angel. Happy Angel is the second one of these. Um, this is also done at a, um, or this layout was also done at a different Sunak Park by Beijing Shibalai. Interestingly enough, using the 
uh, outside or, or inside the rails guide wheels. So this is an entirely new um, you know, design and everything else uh, as far as track style goes and all that. So um, pretty interesting, at least as far as that goes. Let's take a look at the POV. I feel like, you know, anything that has the guide wheels on the outside just looks a little more modern. I mean, you can only get the shaping just so good on the inside since you have to leave a little bit of space uh, or else you're gonna, your wheels are going to bind. <clears throat> Our typical slow start. Let's get going. Thanks to Roller Coaster Dream, by the way, for these. And this is actually a pretty cool layout. Yeah, Handyman 1's been busy. That grass looks great. All right, so let's get this big drop down here. Right into a loop. And we're going into a Cobra Roll. A little bit slow on the Cobra Roll, but not totally awful. Overbanked corner in here into a zero G roll. Another high banked corner, not quite overbanked, but getting there. Then we have course screw number one. And then we turn around into course screw number two, interlocked into the first. And a final little bit of a swoop down here, a little airtime hill there, down into the brakes. Actually, not too bad. In my opinion, a pretty nice looking ride. So one that I'd definitely like to try at some point. Um, the, the layout is interesting enough because it, it looks very much like you would see a small B&M layout. It doesn't seem out of place for a small Vacoma layout, too. Um, knowing how China does their um, RFPs and things like that for requests for proposals, it would not surprise me if this was a layout tendered by a European manufacturer that they then shopped out to a number of other companies and had them redo it as you know a Chinese one. But who knows? I, I don't know that. That is entirely speculation before anybody you know, jumps on me for that. So I, I don't know. Uh, but it would not surprise me. Let's take a look. The so first things first is the uh, drop was, or the first inversions were a little bit higher up. So we're going to go ahead and do that. But yeah, it's it's definitely a you know nice looking execution. It's a pretty well-made ride as far as the shaping goes. It seems to be seems to be kind of halfway decent as far as all that. So uh, that's the hope is that it's getting getting to the point where we're seeing some improvement on these kinds of designs. Go ahead and get our train going so we can be running it while we're building. Okay. Put our Cobra roll up in here now. I'm using this track style because I just think the, the BNM is a little bit too beefy. And like I said, Beijing Shibala did this layout also at with this style of track at another one of the sunak parks which that speaks to kind of my rumor that i i had earlier that it was somebody else who originally designed the layout not surprising if that's the case considering that that there's a second one of these built by another manufacturer at another one of the company's parks uh, would not at all surprise me if that was the case
All right, let's do that roll. See how that roll is. It might be a little bit too quick. Actually, not too bad. I can take that. Now we just need to make sure that the corkscrew is not too quick, which it very well could be. Interlocking corkscrews are not exactly a thing that you see very much on inverted coasters. Actually, Nemesis Inferno is the only one other than these that I can think of that has it interlocked. Um, main reason, I think, being that you really don't get any kind of benefit out of it. As an inverted coaster seating position, you can't really see what's going on around you if you're in any of the rows behind number one. So it's really more for an off-rider perspective or just a space saving design if, if you want to call it that um, but it's not well, it's a little bit quick or if we can let's see how this one it's at 35 which is slightly better The real one's got the sort of fan curve here coming down, but in order to save a little bit of space, I've, I've foregone that one. Better, but let's take off one. And it kind of just looks like it's coming out of the banking more than anything. Oh, not that way. The right. All right, then we want to get right back up to that overall elevation. I'm going to do a flat. I won't do it flat. Okay. The only other thing that I'd like to do here is just move it slightly more into line with tracks so i want to move this over just one because that way i can do this get it a little more accurate or well not accurate per se because we're not recreating anything but So we'll drop down one, go flat here, and then we can pick up and go into the brakes. Actually, never mind. We can start the brakes right here. But brake run, brake run, brake run, and we will put a block right here. Turn that, and then I will pull this last piece of station out in favor of a block, so then we can sit another one closer up. If you want to be fancy with it, you can shoestring it. If Zara is watching, that will have now triggered him to show up. All right, let's see how this one looks. We go back through. Yellow is apparently our coaster color today, because three out of our four are colored this way. Let's have a look.
decent speed through there. A little fast through there, but not too bad. You could always add another grade section if you wanted to. Relatively good through the corkscrew there. 30s. 30s is kind of where you want it to be as far as that goes. And we're hauling into the brake run pretty good. We can even extend this if we really wanted to. The only reason, by the way, that I did not bank this is because I don't have this slope bank since you just can't. The track piece isn't available. If this was the B&M track that we were using, I would absolutely bank that just because it's going to look a little smoother. But I think in this instance, it looks plenty fine. Uh, we did bank this one just so that since it's at the lower point of the, the drop. If you're trying to choose when or not to bank those diagonal corners, um, typically you don't want to bank the ones that are low. You want to, un or you, you, you do want to bank the ones that are low. It best to leave the ones that are up high unbanked if you're going to go that direction. Or it's something that you kind of infer as less than a 45 degree corner. Um, so if it's you know meant to be almost just a little bit of a course correction, then you can kind of unbank that. But um, in general, it's going to look a little strange if you have lower things unbanked but higher things banked. So that's coming along pretty well there. Let's um, actually go back here and look. Give me one second to pull up. I think it's it's interesting. Uh, works. So this may look familiar in that it's the same layout that we just looked at, just a mirror image, and with the different track style. So this is at the uh, different of the Sunak parks. This is at Sunak Nanchang. Um, it's got, you know, Coverall, Loop, all the, the trimmings there. Actually, why don't we just go ahead and watch the video for this one also. Um, clear out this one. Ooh, two commercials. <clears throat> this is a Nanchang Wanda Park, which is now Sunak. I will say the shaping on this one is going to look way better than what we saw earlier with the uh, Crab Island um, SLC layout. Uh, it's still not quite the smoothest, it seems, and from what I gather, that that's pretty par for the course on this ride from enthusiasts who have ridden it. Um, but it's definitely an improvement. Now, I think Golden Horse further improved it with their outside-the-rails running wheels and slightly better design. All right, so let's take a watch. Nice steep drop here. The shaking is, is maybe the camera more so than the ride. I don't think you can attribute the entire thing to the ride, but definitely is not quite as smooth looking as the carbon uh, variety. But same exact layout, just mirror image. Different manufacturer, different track style, different train style, all of those things. Sort of a very odd situation. Find a little dip here and rise into the brakes. That's sort of the added added bonus POV there. The next one that we're going to move to, though, is the uh, crazy roller coaster. This is the Changlong Small Roller Coaster, which is an interesting name since this is the largest roller coaster that they make. Um, granted, it is small. Uh, it's got a 36-foot-tall loop, uh, which is awfully tiny. 
and the layout is is pretty small what the the big thing to notice on this one is that this loop is pretty much a circle you can sort of see it there there you go this loop is pretty much a circle it's almost wider than it is tall which if you've looked at any loops on uh, European and American coasters uh, recently you'll notice that they're the clothoid shape that has the tighter radii at the top radius of the top and the wider radii as you go up into it to really lessen the g-forces in through and then back out um, so that's why you have the teardrop shaped loop gotten away from the circular loops of the early days like Schwarzkopf's which were a lot more circular in in their uh, looping design or the early early days from the 1900s where you had the sort of one-off wooden coasters with loops um, there's a reason they got away from those circular loops but here we are uh, with this one that is pretty nearly a um, full circle and two helixes on either side um, the the fun one with this is that I actually rode this one um, I went to Kwanlin Park when I was in China and did ride this one it um, it was not great. It it hurt a lot, actually. Um, whiplash more than anything, which is kind of interesting. Um, it's it's definitely a snap your neck back and forth, kind of forward and backwards feel. And then the, the transitions as far as banking don't really do you any favors. Honestly, this little drop right here where you kind of are going straight and then all of a sudden it's pulled down really fast and then it takes forever to lessen it out and you look at the radius for this pulling down versus the radius for pulling this pulling out uh, it's a big difference but um, in the spirit of following along let's take a ride on this one thanks to cyclone steve who also has a great channel uh, who sadly i believe he's passed away now but uh, his channel is maintained by others um, so definitely check it out if you get a chance yeah chief bob it's 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 pretty much a perfect circle, and it, it feels every bit of that. Um, it's, uh, yeah. Well done, Duke. <laughs> well done, Jay Morph. That's funny. You will have come full circle. So this is the, this is the coaster. Honestly, the, the thing that is scarier at this park is the Chinese-built uh, cable cars, which go up about we'll say a thousand feet up the side of a mountain and they're very steep as in like almost straight up steep and it is terrifying we got on the ride not knowing where it went actually which is probably a stupid thing to do but uh, it was not a pleasant experience POV. if you go look at my my photos page which is in the link in my twitch here um on a rail uh, dot smugmug dot com uh you can find pictures here in the china section of Kwanlin resort and there's a number of pictures in there of the uh huge cable car up the side of the mountain it was a beautiful sight you just looking at all the rust and how it's bouncing up and down a little bit and just realizing that it's not going to take a whole lot to, to kill you uh, which is probably a really bad mentality to have when you're doing these things but you know it's um it's a thing. Our typical slow lift hill here. Pretty not surprising for this. Here we can see some slightly suspect banking. So here we go into this dive of a drop. Shallow into this really tight loop. Holy cow, really tight. Then back out of it and into this helix. And then meander our way along, recover a little bit. Stop graying out. And we're going to go in the helix in the other direction. And then here's the bit that I didn't like. This drop and then that loop part there. Into the brakes, into the corner, and then into the thing. So that is the Chang Long small roller coaster. See if we can build it. All right. And clear this one out. Okay, let's go back to our corkscrew coaster, which we're using more heavily today than we have been for quite a little while.
Yeah, kind of. A lot of these coasters kind of feel like no limits coasters that just didn't get smooth enough, and you just kind of wonder how it happened. I don't want to make it too tall. I actually, perhaps unfortunately, I actually rode two of these model coasters, um, which was not not the greatest of, of things uh, on our trip, but I can at least claim to have ridden two. See which direction do they roll loop? It is the other direction. Make sense? Actually, I think we can take out the straight section here because we're just going to roll straight into this loop. Well, maybe not that high. Do it like that. Almost. Need to stretch it one more. Okay, down, down, and then And kind of go like way out, does not need to come too close. I'm actually going to do the no no thing here, as I've said, do not recommend that ever, but in this instance, go for it. Okay, and then. This sets us up for our brake run, which it does not have a second train, so we don't need to worry about a block brake. Yeah, you know, you've got to be at just the right angle, but you can get diagonal track through the vertical loops, which always looks really cool if you can make it line up naturally. Uh, I feel like that's the biggest difficulty of that, is trying to just get it to line up in the correct direct in the correct way, so it doesn't look like you're absolutely forcing it through there. All right, what I'm going to use here is the Articulated Steel Coaster Train 2-seater. This is something that Space K released over during uh, over Christmas. This is part of his Christmas 2020 rides release. Let's see how we do. Yeah, these coasters were were tough. This is, I think, this is the only one of the ones we're doing today that I've ridden. Um, but it was it was a lot. It was definitely a lot. That's actually fine. That's not too bad. That looks aggressive, which is appropriate. Red, red. We'll do dark blue. I think was the colors of that one. Yeah, sort of reddish orange, and then the loop itself was yellow. Go. Then the cars were more of a dark blue look All right All right so that's number 5 and we're actually running way ahead of our usual schedule um so I have a couple of extras that I was probably going to do 
But we're going to go ahead and do number six, and then we'll take our break. And then we'll come back to seven, eight, nine, and then ten, and maybe another after that, just depending on how, how things go. A lot of different things we can do. But so next up, we're going to go look at uh, the Super Spinning Coaster from Golden Horse. This looks interesting for a couple of reasons. First of all, if you look at the um, seats, they're pretty much a copy of the Intamin spinning coaster seats. So they've got that same sort of design, the inward facing cars and everything else. But the interesting addition here is that this one has an inversion. So yeah, it actually has a roll inversion partway through the layout. And uh, it is a spinning coaster that does that. So here's the nice photo of it. It's a very odd, uh, odd ride. Now, that's not to say that spinning coasters with inversions have not been shown before by Western manufacturers, but this was the first time that one of these little single car ones has, has done this. Um, aside from, say, Veil of Dark um, or, or Gikon Live Coaster, which is what it is now in Japan, um, and then the, the new mock Extreme Spinning Coasters, of course. But let's take a ride on this one, thanks to Roller Coaster Dream. This is at Shenming Universal City, which is actually not too, too far from uh, Shanghai. So it is possible to get to this park relatively easily. But they've done well to sell a number of these. This is not a one-off by any means. This is, I think, number seven of these. This one, the camera is mounted to the chassis, so you're, you're not going to get the spinning on the, on the video here. But just imagine that the entire ride is free spinning throughout. Got this. A helix, helix and a half. We're getting into the more interesting elements like this fan curve here. A little rough, but not too awful. Another brake run here so then we can keep running multiple trains, not necessarily like China Wood. And here's our roll, nice and slow. Has those over the shoulder restraints, which is not surprising. And we're creeping right here. It's another one of those almost rollback situations. Uh, interesting enough, I'm going to stop here and actually back up just a little bit. China copies coasters. We, we know that just because we've seen designs and layouts and everything. But they also copy architecture. Uh, if you have been to Universal Orlando, uh, you may be familiar with the CityWalk entrance, which is very similar to this structure here. Uh, with this sort of advertising structure on top, plus this staircase that curves up through it. So it's little things like that that you see at these these locations that are not at all surprising to see, where it's just a somebody went around and said, I like that. So yoink, and we'll put it up here. Hey, Extreme, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. You're having a good Saturday. So there you have it. That's the anything, which, by the way, we can look at how sort of... Uh, Bare bones, our chassis is here. There's not a whole lot of spring-loaded anything, so you're you're gonna feel all the bumps. Um, but it it is what it is. Like we said, we're getting better. It's not it's not the China coasters that there used to be, but there's there's still some experimentation going on here. All right, so we're gonna use the mini coaster track, and uh, we're gonna use the Intamin spinning coaster cars that um, Space K has so recently done for us over Christmas as well. If you need to download those, um, you can get them off a new element, or if you go back on my YouTube playlist, you can find when we last talked about this, which is probably four streams ago, maybe, um, that also mentions their or those coaster uh, cars. We did a Space K Rides Pack uh, stream, so you can check them out through there. All right, so we're going to start with a with a station and a hill you might want to actually put the station a little bit closer to the ground um, 
Yeah, we'll go two off. Yeah, that would be great, Extreme. I would love to see that. We're going to leave one here because that'll be our transfer track. And the way that you would do the transfer track here is you'd really just have something like... Um, uh, rid of this. Your transfer track would really just look something like that, and then you could actually get in here and do hybrid track actually and there you go one do-it-yourself transfer track okay so we'll go up a little bit here just because we we know we're going to need it as far as speed goes. Let's actually. This is one of those instances where the BM track option where you can do this started unbanked and end it banked a little more shallow than this. That was where that type of track piece would be very useful. That almost feels a little bit too big when we look at the whole thing. And when we're looking at pictures of, of the whole thing. Uh, let me pull up a shot here. Yeah, that is a little bit bigger than we want it to be. So why don't we go... Do something like this. And we can go up into it. Let's also go ahead and get our train here. Or, or individual car, as it were. Because that way we can start testing this just to make sure that we've got our, our speed right. Two, three, four. Count that mostly because I'm interested in seeing just how far I need to go. At 40, we can't get up to that height um, once we put the brakes in there. But I can do this and still get the We'll put blocks in here, um, if we or we can anyway. Um, you can also cheat the blocks with a hidden chain lift piece there. Um, not my favorite. I kind of don't like doing that. But the fact that you can't adjust the block break trim speed is is a big complaint of mine. So I, I really don't care so much at, at this point. All right. 
And then we'll come right to here. Sure, it makes it there. Then there's two things that we can do with this one. We can either do the barrel roll or we can do the inline twist, such as what you see on the uh, limb track. The thought for me on this one is that it's probably best to do the barrel roll only because you're going to heartline it a little bit better. Uh, let me actually go back though first because I think what I'd like to do is drop this. This way. Oof, that is really slow. Let's. This is one of those that you may really want to get in there and adjust the um, speed on everything. Back to mini coaster. And you can see that we are right underneath of the other one. It's very convenient for pacing and everything. And the real one's got that final helix here, and then raise up into the brakes. We can do this and then actually keep this low. We'll do a load station. We're going to be optimistic about Chinese operations. We'll do a load station, do an unload station. We'll do some blocks here. Okay, now go back and find our barrel roll piece. Table those clearances again. I think I actually went the other way. Let's find out. Let's see if for the school run with blocks, it might be a little bit slow. We also might be able to adjust our mass a little bit. All right, another slow lift till I'm going to actually push it up to five just to have it. I will say it's not a good looking coaster. I think the real thing is not good looking either. Um, I think with some adjustments, you could probably make this look pretty decent, but it's, it's not a great looking ride. Which way our roll went. Opposite way. Two barrel roll to the right instead. Then come back this way. Alright, so let's go back and do red, red, and teal. Sort of a standard kind of color. You see a lot of repeating colors in China. So you see like this one a lot, and then you see the, where is it? This yellow and green a lot. This is a very common color. All right, so that's number six. Uh, this is the um, super spinning roller coaster on um, from Golden Horse that is at a bunch of different parks now. So pretty 
pretty impressive they managed to sell a couple of these, so it must not be too bad. All right, let's go back to our center point here. We'll get rid of that. So we've actually been through six, and we're still ahead of schedule by like 20 minutes. Um, these are going pretty quick today, which is fine. You know, I don't have any issues ending ending early if we wrap up, but uh, we're going to go ahead and take our break now. So if you uh, are here for the first time, we usually take a break about halfway through, usually after number five. Today we're going to take a break after number six, so we can do a couple extras at the end. So if you've been sitting this whole time, get up and walk around a little bit, and go get a snack or a drink or something, and I will see you back here in about you know two minutes or so. I'm going to run some ads to help out the channel, and um, please uh, come on back, and we'll we'll see you then. Thank you, McAndy, for coming by. I appreciate it, and thank you again for the timestamps. I do appreciate that on the YouTube videos. That helps me out immensely and i know people appreciate it so thank you very much for coming by and for doing that for me so all right i will see you guys here in a little bit and welcome back everyone to andros amusement academy number 18 uh, if this is if you're just joining us here halfway through the stream today we are looking at chinese manufactured roller coasters so every week we pick a theme here and we go through nine example coasters or more depending on what's going on. Uh, today we're probably going to do a couple of more because I've got a few in my head that I'd like to do afterwards also. Um, and also happy to take chat requests too if there's a Chinese built roller coaster you're in particular looking to see. Uh, but we have already done a couple of different ones. We've done six different coasters so far. Um, the first one was the uh, the Zhipao six ring roller coaster somewhat of a misnomer being that there's only five inversions uh, we did go ahead and adjust the massing on this so it goes a little bit slower through these corkscrews it's triple cork and this is about the best you can do in rct since we don't have the diagonal corks one of these days hopefully we'll we'll amend that next up is the beijing shibalai jet coaster uh, this is a copy of a coaster that existed in japan that was bought and brought over to China, and now Beijing Shibalai offers this layout. Uh, they've done two on their own, plus the one that was moved over from Japan. So kind of a jet coaster style, very Japanese looking, but relatively smooth actually. Then we did the uh, kind of standard layout of the Chinese inverted coaster. This one's a little bit modified, uh, just to get it to look you know halfway decent. Even though I, I don't know if we'd even call it that. Um, <clears throat> not the best looking, not the best shaping, but that kind of models the real ones, which were kind of suspect as far as that goes. From there, we went on to a slightly more improved version. So this is based on uh, Sunak Harbin uh, Park's Golden Horse uh, Inverter Coaster, which has six inversions and actually looks pretty smooth. Now, we don't have the track type for it, so we're going to use the inverted or compact inverted model that's okay um, so relatively smooth a lot better looking in general um, and then we had two more here the first one was the Changlong small roller coaster uh, unfortunately RCT does not have a circular enough loop for this one um, the real loop is very circular and very intense as I can attest to having ridden this one um, and then the very last thing that we did before break was the golden horse super spinning coaster which is a spinning coaster that also has and inversion in it so pretty unique as far as that goes um, what we said at the very beginning of the stream is that i'm really interested in doing coasters that are unique to chinese manufacturers not so much copied from existing rides that other manufacturers have done um, so we're going to try and stick to that although this next one is a little bit suspect uh, because it's pretty much the same thing just with an added one inversion onto it so <clears throat> We're going to introduce the uh, Hebei company and look at the 11 inversion coaster from Hebei Metallurgical. So, first things first, we're going to go on back to the database and take a look at this. So there's a park in China called the Great Xingdong Tourist World, which Xingdong sounds like a doorbell to me, so I laugh every time I say this. Um, but Great Xingdong Tourist World has a great number of coasters. It actually has um, nine in total, um, but the um, 
well, the th last three that we're going to look at here, number seven, eight, and nine, are all from this same park. So we're going to start here and uh, take a look at uh, at these and see what we can find out of it. Okay, so the first bit here is uh, the fact that this coaster is not yet open, so they're still working on this one. Um, you'll notice if um, you've been paying attention to layouts and things like that that this is a copy of the Intamin 10 inversion layout that just so happens to have an extra loop. The lift hill is slightly less steep, but it happens to have an extra loop, a little steep drop, still cobra roll, still two corkscrews, still a quad roll, and still a roll at the end. It also has over-the-shoulder lap bars, which is somewhat unique in that it's one of the earliest coasters from China to have this. Um, there's really not a whole lot of this. This looks very much like a modern Intamin coaster. So there's a lot of uh, new tech. I mean, whether it's stolen tech or new tech, you'd be the judge. Uh, going in here, but two inversions, and then the rest of it is the standard kind of thing. Like I said, it hasn't opened yet, and there's no question as to when or how or if it will, but we're going to still go ahead and recreate it because it's interesting. So let's, uh, let's go back and go into the game and, and see what we can do here. All right, so... Go ahead and see here. We're going to go ahead and use the B&M Twister Coaster. Only because it's got all the pieces that we need. If we really wanted to get into this later, we can go back through and add in all the Giga Coaster track pieces and everything else, but we're not going to get there. So for the first time today, we're going to add in the large inversions. And we can make this look relatively smooth. Okay. So first things first, let's take a look at how these loops go. So these loops are going from outside to inside. This one is going to be more or less recreated. We need that section there. Now the real one's got a little bit of an airtime hill here before the Cobra roll. Not a huge one though. Now we'll go ahead and use this. Quarter loop. Bring ourselves down a little bit so it'll be just a little shorter. Go back and look at our photos here. The real one, the, the Intamin version, goes to the right as a cobra roll, but this one I think might go the other direction. No, it does not. It does go this way. <clears throat> go ahead and add in this element here. And now we need to get into the two corkscrews, which are going to run right into our ride here. Which, if I turn off clearances, we can see that that's not going to fly. And try it like this. All right, so we can get just sort of kind of out of the way. And then as far as drops go, well, different ways to do this. I 
the drop is almost flat here at the at the beginning. We can kind of take it like this. Turn. And then go up just like this. That puts ourselves right in there, so maybe not. So we will do one more. It gets us to 110 up top here. The first conversions are at 95. That should be okay. Way down here, put our station track. Or you toggle off that chain. We're really trying to kill some time just to get up to the the space where it'll let us do the the curves here. We want to be just outside of there, which we are. And I want to be a little bit flat here. That way it'll hit this right about where we need it to be. I do have to wonder if this ever will open. Um, I'm sure COVID did not do well for this in this park. Um, but they've also had, I guess it was closed in 2018 when someone went by. Um, so it may not be surprising if this is already closed down, um, which would be a little bit of a shame just based on the uniqueness of what's out there. But who knows? It, it may still be, may still be around and viable. Let's see. All right, so we got a quad inversion there. We're, we'll do them all back to back just because we do have the space to do it. Gonna stretch out that version, which looks a little funky, but I think it looks maybe a little bit better stretched like that than it does if we put it right in the middle. Up. And since we've been rolling in the left-hand direction, we will roll back to the right here. A little bit too close, though. Let's see. A little closer than I think we might want. Do this. Do a straight piece there. Give us another little straight piece here just to give us some more distance. That last barrel roll should be slightly different. One roll is not like the other three. Which one do you mean? put the straight section there all right so definitely a uh, little, little interesting second to last one on the ride oh you're right you are absolutely correct And this one will go this way then. Okay, so I'm going to use the Intamin LSM launch coaster trains. I think those probably look the most accurate to what we're doing here. We'll go with six cars, two trains. Let's see how this goes. Again, color of the day seems to be yellow. We will go with that.
I think we'd want to stretch this ride out if we could, maybe a little bit more width. I'm actually not at all bothered by the amount of hang time there, although that may be a little much. We can adjust that out. Um, mostly because I, I wanted to have a little bit of hang time. Because in all likelihood, the Chinese one is going to have a lot of hang time. But we can adjust a little bit of that. All right. So first things first, let's make some changes here. We'll go fully down. There's just a little bit more space here. Um, I prefer not to screw with the train mass unless I I don't have to. Um, or unless it's like a single car train or something that I know is just going to have weird mass in the game anyways. Unfortunately, the game just doesn't treat single car vehicles super great. So if I can avoid it, I like to not have to mess with the mass, but I, I will if I need to. So this might be a combination of both. Um, here, so let's look at this one and just put the second one down a little bit. Which unfortunately screws with our corkscrews. <laughs> one fix at a time, though. The mass adjustment is great. I, I wish, um, like Greg Gibley had said earlier, I wish there was a an adjustment for friction more so, just because I feel like that's a little more useful. Just the way, but the way that that's treated in game doesn't really lend itself to that. So we'll have a bit of a flat section there, which is not my favorite, but not out of the question for realism anyways. All right, let's see if this is better. The The ideal situation is there there should be more hang time than there it looks like there ought to be. Like if you're used to a normal coaster hang time, add a little bit more, and I feel like that's going to get you what this one is going to do in, in, in real life if it ever gets operating. And the reason for that is I just find in general the Chinese built coasters tend to have a little more friction because I think the track bending just isn't quite as good. All right, not bad. So both of those are a little bit slow, but not too awful. Okay, again, a little bit slow, but not awful. Fork screws are not bad, maybe a little fast, not too awful. And this is just right. And into the brakes. Ideally, there'd be a little bit more space here before brake run and or before end of inversion in brake run, because you really don't want to start slowing everybody down until that last car is out of the out of the roll. We could stand and go a couple more back, but I think we'll leave it at this. <clears throat> so that's the Hebei 11 inversion roller coaster. Uh, Hebei had started out by making a bunch of very suspect corkscrew type coasters, so the standard loop screw types. Uh, thankfully, they've moved on to slightly better things, it appears. So hopefully, the rest of their coasters are going to show some improvement also, but we'll see what happens. May or may not. Okay, so next up, we're going to stay in that same park. Like we said, the next couple are actually going to be here, and we are going to look at the vertical roller coaster, which, if you've been following theme park blogs and things like that, this one made a big deal when it first came out because this was the first 
I guess you could call it partial knockoff of a B&M coaster. Um, because you'll notice it uses the B&M box track and very B&M-like supports. Uh, and this is the, really the first one in China that we saw doing something like that. You'll also note that it transitions different track types here partway through to the Intamin double spine track or something similar to it. Um, so a little bit of an odd an odd sense. So this is the vertical drop coaster, but you'll notice it does not have a vertical drop. It's more like 80 degrees or so. Um, it's, it's a very strange one. The Immelman here after the drop rolls out very, very early, has quite a high helix here, and then a drop here into the a tunnel, another two helixes at the end, and then, then the brakes. It's just a very odd one. Adding to the confusion, the uh, train is actually four rows and not um, three rows or two rows than, that you see on the B&Ms. Uh, it is only six across, thankfully. Um, anything more than that, and I'm not sure it would have done so well. But uh, the point of the shorter trains on the real ones is so that everybody gets a great view of that drop. But I guess when you're not dropping 90 degrees, you can do that. So it's, it's okay. So let's see what Golden Horse themselves has to say. Uh, Jinma Rides here is the Golden Horse um, uh, name. Uh, that's also what they go by. So here's actually a great look at this. So let's take a, take a look at uh, the layout here. So you've got station, curve out of the out of the station into the your pretty steep lift hill, flat curve, holding brake, not a vertical drop, an Immelman pulling out very early, very high helix into a block brake, again not a vertical drop, into this shark's mouth for some reason, a butterfly turnaround here, so you got one 270 helix, a water splash in our uh, decorative concrete trough here, and then a, another 270 into the brakes. Got that moving floor going just fine, so this one is floorless. Looking very similar to the B&Ms. And this has done well for them, actually, because they're building a second one of these now. It's actually already standing. It's the same layout as this one, but uh, they've done, done it well, done it again. Just like the B&Ms, this is a chain lift here. So this is a basically a reverse chain that's going to just slowly advance the thing up and over. Which, by the way, hi to Zara and hi to Intamin. Thank you. And uh, also to Rob. I never did say hi. There's that not vertical drop into that Immelman and, um, you know, relatively smooth looking turnaround here. Gonna fully stop, which is is a bit of a bit of a disappoint into the shark's mouth here. Keep your hands in; those clearances look a little tight. Then into the trademark green Chinese water. It does have the scoops, just like Shikra and Griffin and the other ones. Soaks that track on the other side, which is probably not holding up super well. Then up and into the brakes, transitioning back into the B&M track right at the end. <laughs> Zara, everything about this coaster is a disappointment. <laughs> yeah, ki kind of. I mean, it's it's one of those that I, I kind of almost cheer for them, because I'm, I'm trying to see them do something interesting. But I just, it's it's just not... It's a very, it feels very rigid. Like it feels very square. It feels very, um, it feels like they're trying really hard and not getting there. <laughs> Hello, Yogurt Togo. <laughs> Welcome in. How are you today? Uh, yeah, the uh, famous green water. I, I do feel like every theme park ride I did in China that had water in it was all suspiciously green and was not, not great. But yeah, the holding brake must be pretty good in the back row. Uh, thankfully, it's not crazy steep. Like, it's not near as steep as the B&Ms, but it's, it's still, you know, not small. All right, so let's start like this.
All right. I'm going to do this like a standard BNM, more or less. See how we're doing as far as overall height goes. That'll work. Let's go ahead and get our, what is it, six seat. I never find these. Six seater twister trains. I don't know who named that, but vertical drop trains. Four of these bad boys. Okay. Do the one holding break for the drop. Yeah, I th you know the dueling tilt coasters from Golden Horse were were pretty interesting, and I do wonder again if that was a stolen. Um, if that was more of a stolen thing from um, another manufacturer that maybe they maybe they took um, or or Wanda took and gave to them, um, I I don't I don't know how to feel about those because they they actually look interesting. Apparently they're really terrible, uh, but I really love their new tilt coaster, which we're going to look at next. Uh, the layout I think is is gorgeous, um, and apparently it runs pretty well. But then we have things like this. Now, fun fact, if you don't follow Chinese coasters, they are in the process of building a Chinese wing coaster. So it's uh, going to look like a B&M wing coaster. Uh, it will be at uh, Taozhou Zoo Park, I believe. Or Taijiao Zoo Park, I think it is. Um, but it is in the process of getting built. So that could be interesting. Golden Horse also offers a B&M flying coaster. So if you're a fan of things like that, then keep your eyes out because it might be about to get really strange. Oh, let's power roll to the right. I don't want to go up this direction. At least that gives me a little bit more runway here. Okay, that'll work. So unfortunately, we've got to put these brakes to basically a full stop. And we'll do change to vertical coaster real quick. And then I guess we'd put that in the tunnel at some point. We call this a water splash of some kind. Ah, shoot, I am one off. Come around, come up into the brakes, work backwards here, we'll put our block brakes, put two, three, other set of blocks. Eighteen, twenty-two, twenty-seven. Actually, let's get rid of the twenty-seven and put a straight piece. 
I'm not a huge fan of putting breaks right at some other element before or after it. Give it two trains. The real one needs the English palette to make it look properly nice, but... Red, yellow, and... It'll be interesting to see. I find that a lot of the Chinese coaster companies tend to do some kind of a custom layout, whether it's a layout that was handed to them or, or in some other fashion, and then end up just cloning that layout all over. Uh, I don't usually see a whole lot of just variety where a park is out there ordering a custom layout over and over again. Um, we'll see if that changes. I'm really curious over time if that's going to be an adjustment or not. So in actuality, as far as like an RCTE coaster, I don't think that looks half bad. Uh, there's a little bit of weirdness here as far as just overlapping goes, especially from some of these different angles, but not not awful. All right. <clears throat> So the last one before our bonus uh, one, we're going to look at the uh, Golden Horse Tilt Coaster. So this is the one that I was saying here earlier, I think has a fantastic layout. So Tilt Coaster history, uh, if you follow your coasters, um, the one and only Tilt Coaster, as it existed for a number of years, was uh, the Vekoma Tilt Coaster at uh, Lipao World in Taiwan. Uh, that had a full vertical tilting track at the top of the lift hill that released into a curving tunnel, had a loop and a helix, and that was about it. Uh, but that was as kind of as far as it went for a number of years. Um, Golden Horse introduced the uh, tilting coaster once again uh, in a dueling variety at uh, Wanda Nanchang, uh, the same park actually that we looked at that purple inverted coaster earlier. Um, then they've since offered a couple of other ones. Uh, this layout is sort of their most recent layout, and they've cloned it a couple of times already. But it actually has what I find to be quite a nice layout. You can see there there's a lift. You have their tilt section. Uh, one of the things that you'll note about tilt coasters in China is that none of them are vertical drops. I actually asked the Golden Horse guy at IAPA one time why they can't go vertical. Um, and or if they could go vertical and he said no the steepest they can go is 70 degrees so I guess that's just technology gap or whatever that may be I'm not quite sure but that was a, a very hard and fast no uh, so I guess that's part of it but um, we got this drop here into a big Immelman into a Cobra roll this sort of uh, spiral helix uh, element that's got some elevation to it um, and then two rolls at the end that I think we're going to figure as um, inline twists just because we don't have the diagonal corkscrew and then a turn back into the station so uh, pretty interesting overall design so let's take a look and we're just going to approximate that tilt track because obviously we can't do that yet in RCT I don't know if that's a thing that will come at some point maybe eventually Rid of this one. I am going to go ahead and use that BM track again um, just because I think it's most versatile at this point. And make sure you stick around for the last coaster here if you haven't because it's uh, number 10. Our bonus one is going to be pretty interesting. And if you haven't followed Chinese coasters very much, you probably haven't heard of it yet. Okay, so I'm going to start here in the middle, and 
and come up with a nice big loop here. Uh, let's actually go one or two more. That's at 95. We'll take off one vertical. I'm going to add anything extra in there because the hardest part on this is always, I've tried this layout a couple of times, the hardest part is always getting this helix to uh, cooperate through this inversion. Because the clearances of the Immelman are always a little bit funky. I've yet to ride a tilt coaster, and I'd very much like to. Now, I know Vacoma can do them still. Um, none of them have been built, though that's not to say that there aren't rumors of Vacoma having new ones here soon. See if that is the case soon or not. Okay, let's see if we can maybe stretch this. One straight piece in there. That's how I'm typically going to build a cobra roll. And if I can do the cobra roll with quarter loops, all the better. Because I don't typically like having the cobra rolls where the bottom is really, really close to each other. Which, unless you put a couple of straight pieces on top, is, is how it's going to look. Yeah. Now the question remains, can we get through with something else? Which, surprisingly enough, we can actually. So we're freestyling a little bit here. But that's okay. This is why I don't do coaster recreations also. Because you're, you're going to frustrate the hell out of yourself trying to get it exactly right. And if it's not quite there, then it's going to be really annoying. And don't annoy yourself. It is not worth your time. Will not actually go full vertical on that. I'm actually not certain if that's gonna make it, but let's let's see. A little bit more. Go ahead and put in our Station on this side, that drop could be underground, and you can put the rest of the stuff in trenches. Best way to do this is probably going to be diagonal breaks. Gonna actually go ahead and stretch this out just a little bit. Pull the station out, gives me some more room to play with as far as the station goes. And then our brake run too. And I think I want to use the El Loco cars that Space K made just because they seem kind of big and beefy. Feels about right for this. We can use a six car train or a five car train. 
Um, in this instance, uh, we're going to use a six car. See what our sizing is. Eat every bit of that. Big and beefy. Number three on the menu. Okay. See how it looks. And then you can theme theme up this whole tilt drop so that it looks a little more tilt like. But since we are not able to do that, you just gotta theme it and pretend. And let's see how well it takes this inversion because I think it's gonna be a little slow, <clears throat> a lot slow. How about this one. That's not bad. It does. The colors have a very Manhattan Express look. Question is, is it better or worse? Hard to say. I realize, though, that we actually didn't watch the video for this. I do have one. Actually, let's back up because that's an interesting thing. Look at his. Look at the restraints here. I, I he's got some kind of an over-the-shoulder seat belt, which I'm guessing buckles into a, another one that comes across, and then the over-the-shoulder harness that also has a seat belt on top. Um, I found this a lot in China, where it overkill on the restraint. And some of the coasters over there had very, very, very arbitrary weight limits. Where one day there was a coaster that had a 165 pound weight limit. And the um, then right after that, I rode the next day some something from the same manufacturer that had no weight limit whatsoever. That is an interesting thought intimate if it's a regulatory thing that it doesn't have a vertical... Uh, drop which very well could be because actually China's inspection service or inspection company for like new rides like their their TUV or their their OSHA is actually surprisingly scrutinizing uh, which generally when you think of, of China you don't necessarily think of a safety on you know construction and rides you kind of think of cheap built and things like that but it's actually reasonably strong um, hey Hydra, welcome. We're actually running way, way, way ahead of time. Uh huh. We're actually on number nine right here, but this is the best, uh, the best one I think. So reasonably quick through that inversion, unless they sped up the video, which is not outside of China. Or Chinese manufacturers doing. That feels a little more accurate. A nap sounds very nice. My my wife and dog are currently doing that. And I would not mind that. There's those two slow rolls. They're almost flat here. Look at the second one. It's like almost a flat, hang timey inversion. And then our little tiny short break run here. Which is interesting that the only like POV section is is the brakes. Very odd. Um, you can see that they also have the golden horse inverted um, layout that we looked like earlier. Um, and then there's our, our friend in the back here, and then off to the right was the 11 version coaster too. Um, very, very Chinese looking park with these giant wide pathways fencing across the whole thing, like little huts and things, but utterly kind of dead looking throughout. Um, it, it is a very a very common aesthetic which is, is a little bit strange but is is instantly recognizable once you've been to a chinese park um but yeah yogurt dog actually I, I like this layout a lot i think this is a really cool 
coaster, and honestly, this is one of the Chinese coasters that I'd probably most like to ride. Uh, it just looks reasonably fun. So I, I I credit China for that, or Golden Horse anyway, for, for doing that. So there is our... There it is. There is our one here. A little bit slow through this inversion. Um, unfortunately, there's not a whole heck of a lot we can do with that. We can bring down the overall height of this. We end up moving the whole thing over a little bit. But we can do that if if we really want to, but I don't think we do. Let me see how slow it goes through there one more time. Ten, twelve, nine, nine. That is really slow. We can just bring it down for so slightly. Let's let's do that. Okay. So we will take. This one here, we'll add in one more straight piece, then we don't have to deal with moving a whole lot of other things. That piece right there. Actually, since we're using the big inversions, we can save ourselves a space there. Put the corkscrew, get our straight piece, our corkscrew. That actually maybe looks a little bit better with the single or only two sections of straight track there. And this helix turned out reasonably well in that space. If there's any other, since we're running way early, if there are any other coasters that you would like to see from China, feel free to drop them in the chat uh, and I can take a look at them. We have one special one that I want to do next. Um, after that, it's fair game if we want to look at some other things. But other than that, we may end early today. These all went pretty quickly. Let's see how our speed is through here. Slow but better. It actually feels normal speed through the overall. This is not, this is Golden Horse Hydro. All the coasters today that we're looking at are um, Chinese built or manufactured and built. So in this case, you would want to go ahead and shoestring that diagonal uh, break just because it does hit this awfully quick at the end, which is going to kill your stats if you're playing for stats. A heck of a lot of negative Gs, negative 1.3 laterals is where it's killing there. 1.6 or 7.6, so not, not so good as far as that goes. <clears throat> All right. So as, as we always do, let's do a quick recap of what we built today, and then we'll move on to special edition number 10. So we started out today with the G-PAL six ring roller coaster. Uh, no, they don't have, they have the, the vertical drop coaster, but it doesn't drop vertically. So it's only about 70 degrees, which is slightly suspicious and a little bit odd. Um, so here's our triple cork coaster. After that, we went and moved to the uh, jet coaster, which is copied from a Japanese layout that was then moved to China and since copied by this Beijing Shibalai company uh, two times more. So not, a, not a bad looking ride, though. After that, we did the standard uh, Chinese built inverted coaster that has the airtime hill which was originally a zero G roll on the original prototype before it was removed. After that, we looked at a slightly more improved variety of this, 
which is based on um, Happy Angel at Sunak in Harbin. Picks inversion, probably based on a European coaster layout, most likely. Um, they planned for something that was then interpreted by the Chinese folks to this layout. But it honestly looks pretty good. It might be one of the best looking of the coasters that we've, we've looked at so far. And then we looked at the Changlong small roller coaster, which has a pretty much circular loop and is incredibly painful from a whiplash standpoint, as I can attest having ridden it. Then we looked at the uh, spinning golden horse wild mouse that has a roll in the middle of the layout. This is pretty much a recreation of the layout. It's a little bit choppy here, and I'm sure we can do better and maybe use some diagonals to make it smoother if we ever wanted to go that way. But it's uh, close enough. And then we jumped over into our more modern ones. So this is the Hebe Metallurgical uh, 11 inversion coaster, which you'll recognize is the Intamin 10 with another loop. Pretty much the same deal as, as the other ones. Um, also has some maybe pacing issues, not issues, but a little bit slow. Uh, from there, we went ahead and did our vertical drop coaster based on the Golden Horse vertical drop coaster, which is not actually vertical, but we did anyway because we're, we're feeling kind today. We went ahead and put that in. Got that high helix out of the uh, Immelman. Second drop there that is not vertical. And our water splash and everything else. And then finally, we did the uh, tilt coaster over here. Of course, you can't do the tilt in the game, so we just approximated and made it kind of sort of close. All right. So that is the last of the broken rail roller coaster is what they call it. There are three of these now. So the uh, Sujo Amusement Far Land Forest World covers all the adjectives. Um, this one has got the same layout as uh, the other one does. Um, and then Battle of Jungle King, uh, if you're not familiar with it, is a dueling tilt coaster, which looks absolutely super cool. Um, although, from what I understand, it's not the most comfortable of rides, and it also doesn't duel very often. But in you know, the idea is it, it's pretty cool. You are right, though. Broken Rail Coaster is an evocative name. It uh, feels, feels more than a little bit concerning. But this does look really, really neat. But anyway, I promised a, um, a, a special one. Um, so eBay uh, Metallurgical, which we're looking at, has a couple of coasters that are under construction. One of these coasters is called Dharma Boundary, A Journey to the West, uh, which is in Jiangsu. Uh, but there's no pictures of it here. Um, it's got a bat wing, a corkscrew, and a cobra roll, which if you'll think about that a little bit, those sound out of order because usually your cobra roll is the very first because it's the biggest, and the corkscrew is at the end because they're typically pretty small. Um, it is not. And uh, this is the kind of coaster that I think a lot of enthusiasts still picture all the coasters in China as, um, as in pretty suspect. So let's uh, let's watch this. This is a uh, an interesting one. It's still in testing. He was this guy who's clearly never filmed anything in his life before. There's a corkscrew that's having a little trouble. And then the world's slowest cobra roll. Up and into the brakes. If it can make it. It's struggling hard. But there it goes. If you follow um, Vertical Horizons on Facebook, you will likely have seen this. Um, a lot of other aggregate sites have picked up his photos that he's found also. Um, but it's uh, it's something. It is It is something. So we're going to make one. Because why the heck not?
Okay. I think we'll go ahead and stick with the corkscrew trains, maybe. Although I was debating because I kind of wanted to go with the large inversion for some of this. Um, Oh, well, there is no loop. It was, it was, there was never, as far as I know, there was never a loop in it. It just has this really long, straight section. It actually matches the concept art very well uh, from what it initially was. It's, uh, that, that straight section at the beginning looks like it ought to have had a loop. But the whole thing is just... Pretty, pretty concerning. Not that I'm aware of. Now, granted, I have not fully um, followed it, but I'll have to look back through and see because I am relatively certain that it has always been in this direction since the initial concept artwork. I'm going to look in real quick just to see here in my files if I have the concept artwork because I'll post it. Let's see. I honestly don't know how to do this in a way that's not going to just be totally ridiculous. Okay, actually, here, let me... Pull up this. So here is the early concept art for it, which still doesn't have the loop on it. So it, it does have the very suspect, really flared cobra roll that's way lower than it probably ought to be. No, very confusing looking ride. Let's, um, I actually kind of want to do like this. Then the uh, let's see, uh, drop down a little bit and have our this long section here at the beginning. It's really terrible looking. Walk our corkscrew in here. Um, And then our cobra roll fits somewhere in here. Looks like it's supposed to go over top of these elements. I really can't see that doing. It's really the way that this cobra roll is shaped. It's it's really almost a flat corner here. We do that instead. This. 
goes away in favor of this then also sits at this level as our corkscrew here And give it the benefit of the doubt as far as smooth drops go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do this instead. All right, so that's half loop up at fifty. Our roll left. This is the epitome of cursed layouts. One tighter here. It's, it's about the worst. <laughs> like most cover rolls. Uh, you'll feel bad for things. Also, this I can't. I can't. gotta make it consistent. <laughs> Looks too bad. All right, we're gonna use the. Let's see, where do I have them still? Okay, let me add them. I think we'll go with the Vacoma MK newer ones. Six cars. One train because this doesn't deserve a second train. Put blocks in there just in case I want it for later. And not to take away from the good stuff that I feel like China is currently doing as far as coaster development goes but these are just fun to look at because they're just kind of crazy to laugh at okay let's um what is this twister roller coaster 2 let's see what the twister roller coaster 3 680 480 I think we're going to end up reducing our mass here pretty substantially. The battling is not looking too bad. It's just looking a little bit big. That corkscrew at the end is going to be pretty concerning. Well, that part's already too slow. Or slow. Too slow. Corkscrew's got it going. Oh, that's so bad.
You bring those down one so that I can slow the whole thing down. Build through it. It's fine. Totally fine. On off. go All right, let's see what this one is this is twister coaster 218 All right set mass 18 let's go for 300 see what that looks like see if that is sufficiently laggy as you figure with guests it would go even lower Yeah, this one is it's actively testing so I, the expectation is that at some point it is going to open to guests so careful to those guests i suppose there we go that feels about right i wish it crawled into the station there a little bit more but out of curiosity what happens if we go 200? Make this almost as bad as a single wild mouse car. I might not even make it through this bat wing. Yep. But. We count at 250. Let's see what the minimum is in order to still make this work. Oh, whoops. There it is, 250. But can it make it through the coverall? <laughs> Just barely. That's perfect. That's better. We're gonna we're gonna stick it through that. It's the it's the sort of cover roll. Then the other one that I wanted to look at is Our city, an indoor coaster. That's the only coaster with both elements as far as a batwing and a, a cobra roll. Um, yeah, although something like Goderix at Park Asterix has got the butterfly and the batwing, which is more or less the same thing. Kind of, sort of. Uh, let me find... See if I can work. Yeah, I would say your your closest one is is probably going to be Goderix. Um, 
look at Amazon. I will find this here in a minute because this is another good one among the posters that kind of went around as far as the memes go. I can never remember the name of it. Here it is. All right. So this is Star Ripper uh, from Star Fantasy Port. This ride is not currently operating at the moment. Um, that's because the entire park is not operating. Not to say that there's nothing wrong with the coaster. Um, but if if you recognize this POV, you know what's coming. Uh, it did make the rounds a little while ago. Um, this one is also by uh, Hebe, um, Metallurgical, we, I believe. Um, the scary part about this is that we believe there's another one of these. Um, and I have some pictures of it, and I believe it's the same company uh, that built this park as has built the second park. So clearly at some point they were trying to build another one. Um, so it's, uh, it's interesting. It is, it is a loop of death for sure. Although I think the banking of death more so. You've never seen this one. You are in for a treat. Things on tracks. Let's, uh, ride our slow lift hill to our doom here and enjoy this one. Uh, it is, it is a special, special one. Um. And like I said, this takes nothing away from um, the the cool, unique innovation that China is doing for coasters right now. But there are still a number of these pretty darn suspect ones, which every area has had over time. Um, some of the early arrows were pretty bad too. But let's take a look at this thing. So first of all, crazy circular loops, really tight. Holy cow. Mm, very little banking here. And now we get weird with this sort of corkscrew that's got some trouble. Then this outward but sort of inward banked corner. A tunnel where you can't see what's coming and is probably not great. Um, and we're going to just really struggle to get back to the station, which is somewhat amazing with how high this coaster is. This is one of those comments that I had earlier about how how much friction is on some of these Chinese coasters just based on the track bending ability. When you're struggling to get back after that tall of a lift hill, it means you either need some more grease or you're just looking at uh, a lot of different things that, that could be done better. But um, yeah, there's just... You know, it's looking at some of those those bits like, uh, you know, that is not ideal. There is that. This is definitely not ideal when you're already banked the other way, um, going on, pulling to the left, and then you'll be pulling right back to the right here in just a second. Not, not great. So the uh, Star Ripper, let's pull that up. There, the Star Fantasy port. See some decent pictures of this. So a couple enthusiasts did visit the park, but it was closed at the time. From what I understand, or what the comment was, it's a um, uh, it was a, a some kind of like fire notifier issue or something from a code standpoint that the whole place didn't open. And I guess I don't know if it's ever been fixed or or what, but. Um, but yeah, Belgian guy, the, the shaping of the the corkscrews is what concerns me. Because honestly, loops you can take at a very tight, tight thing. I mean, the Changlong ride that we looked at earlier is a great indication of that. Because I, I rode it, and they're they're tight. That's about They were about this size. And it definitely gives you some whiplash and definitely compresses your spine into a place that it shouldn't be. But at the same time, there's not horizontal movement to it, or not much anyway. Uh, the corkscrews, which have that extra, uh, you know, you get your X, Y, and your Z direction, uh, really introduce some other special pain that uh, is, is not great if it's shaped poorly. And I would say these are shaped pretty poorly. <clears throat> so that is our Chinese built coaster uh, stream. We did nine plus a bonus one. 
If there's anything that you guys want to see as far as other Chinese built coasters or ones that you want to look at, let me know and we can certainly pull them up here before we wrap up. But um, I think you know this went pretty quickly and there's plenty to plenty of other ones to look at. Um, definitely a lot of clones of the Western coaster layouts, but uh, still a number of other custom ones and, and very well could be that we do a part two of this uh, stream here at some point. Yeah, Hydra, this is the only one in at this park. Um, I was trying to see if I could find a... Uh, trying to see if I could find something here. The little, the little tiny train, the little two-car train. That's part of the reason that your pacing sucks so much. Um, but I'm trying to see if I can find in my files here a couple of different things. Okay, for one, let's... Go back and look at uh, Golden Horse. So I mentioned earlier the Golden Horse is making a wing coaster. Uh, so here it is. They are currently building this, as it turns out. So you can see the layout here. Actually not a bad layout. It's got pretty cool looking support here too. You got your dive drop, got your roll here, some kind of inland we can presume on the far end. Corkscrew, looks like a slow roll here perhaps. And then a uh, turn in, kind of turn around here and into the uh, station. What is even more concerning we're going to go that way is we've got the the golden horse Valaire. so these are actually built um, and I believe it's a different company that built the first one I think it was Beijing Shibalai who did the original one of these knockoff um, variety uh, so definitely some concerns as far as that goes um, but those are already standing. Uh, Hydra, let me see if I can find that one for you. I know you were looking for it. It's, it's a lot of different parts and pieces of it, and I'm trying to see if there's any one that shows enough of it to be worth our, our time. And all this said, I had a great time when I was in China, and I would love to go back. Um, it was a very nice time. Um, so one of these days, I, I do intend to get back. Here, Hydra, is the what I've got saved of the other one that was under construction. This is similar to that Star Ripper from Star Fantasy Port. This loop looks a little bit bigger, and it looks a little better, in, in a little better shape, perhaps. So who knows? It may be, it may be a much better looking or performing ride. Let's see if I have anything else from Parks. And you know the Western rides, Western built rides over there are really doing some pretty cool stuff. Um, it's there's definitely a lot of of pretty neat. Neat things. Uh, let me see. And then the last one here is this is a one that was being advertised. I think they had it at Asian Expo, uh, which is actually pretty interesting. This is a custom layout from Golden Horse. Uh, it's got two loops. It's got this sort of roll thing here, and then another roll thing out of it, and then another roll at the end. So one, two, three, four, five inversions in a pretty tight space. 
which actually looks uh, like a lot of fun. So maybe two rolls there and then a drop at the end. What is this one? Oh no, the double stream park. Uh, the uh, let's so the link that uh, Extreme just sent was uh, this guy here at uh, Double Stream Park. This is a knockoff of the SBF Visa Cool and Fresh uh, coaster, which is um, pretty horrendous. Look at that loop support. <laughs> Look at those trains too. Uh, thankfully, this is very much standing but not operating. Uh, there is a second one of these though that is also uh, listed as operating, but uh, is all in all likelihood not going to be doing it. So there's there's a lot to see here. Um, the original SBF visa is actually at um, Anka Park or um, World, whatever they're calling it now. The one, the park that's in Turkey that's got like twenty coasters. Uh, it's currently not operating, but they've recently announced that, that park is going to reopen, I want to say in April or May. So it very well could be that the original one of these gets new life, which is maybe not the best of things. Uh, but <clears throat> pretty uh, pretty scary stuff here. Look at this loop. Uh, not, not the thing that I think you want to be going through. But I kind of want to just play around real quick with that other, because we've got time, that other Golden Horse layout that we were looking at here just a little bit ago. Because um, I think that could be okay. Um, go down here. I did a couple of Golden Horse and a couple of Hebei rides while I was in China. Um, honestly, they weren't totally awful. Um, the There was a couple that were. Um, the I did a mine train at Happy Valley, Happy Valley Wuhan. That that was pretty awful. Um, but uh, the couple of the loop screws that were over there were no worse than the... Um, I mean, if no worse than you would say a standard old arrow coaster. Um, so like I said at the beginning, I, I think Chinese coasters can get a little bit of a bad rap sometimes because they just don't quite have that same level of refinement and there's enough of the stuff like we were just looking at, we just spent our time looking at that is really giving those coasters a bad name where some of them are actually some pretty good stuff. I need just one more out of that. Let's see. Maybe that'll help. We can do. For my steep drops to be this way. 120, that might actually be a little bit too big. But who knows? We'll see. Although, actually, we are just kind of in the way. There we go. Oh, well, the real one sort of had this kind of roll up into the roll up into the inversion and then finish it. 
Uh, we're going to go ahead and just do a double barrel roll. And it it went back down, and then there was another roll here at the end. It was also leaving us a little bit high up at the moment. Not quite the same level of detail. Actually, what I didn't see on this one is the, the real one's like a dive drop. That's even more interesting. Let's, uh, let's look at that. If we do that, I'm going to have to come over. Here. Get to the limb. Was this right? Guarantee you I'm going to need to be higher than that or have some much, much, much better friction. Yeah, I think you're right. Hydro is, is might be better to do all these. Hey, sheep. Welcome in. Just catching us on the tail end of, of honestly, right now we're kind of screwing around building um, example coasters that Folks like Golden Horse have shown. Prefer not to have the straight section there, but maybe we can just do it like this. Then I can just roll it this way. down like one or two as long as I can get through those first couple of um, inversion or inversions then we'll be okay but I don't think it will We can see. All right, we're gonna give this one. How trains were they using? This one might end up just being a. Let's see how many. See how much mass we need to adjust to get it to work. I'm gonna give it seven cars just so it will have a little bit more momentum. Right, needs to be six. And. Let's boost our lift hill here. It should the pre it should work without a pre drop because we use the inline twist so it doesn't go up like the barrel roll. But let's see. Question is, will it make it through any of these? I'm just barely there. Just barely there. Perfect. These are going to all be too fast. Okay. No, no, maybe not. Maybe not. This one will be, though. Yep. But not awful. Not awfully so. Uh, okay. Uh...
then where is my limb track? Oops. Make the flat bank curve at the bottom of the lift hill after the loops. I could. I, I, guess, I guess we could climb up to it and do it that way. Let me first run this here real quick. Oops. <laughs> That's not even close. Oh, shoot. There is uh Belgian guy we did we did that earlier actually. Uh seventy degrees is what I believe the uh was. So we did it here. We showed ours as a vertical drop, but the real one does not have a vertical drop. Let me get this one in here, try Hydro's thing. Uh, suggestion and then we will look at what we've already done I don't know why my perspective is all over the place today okay there we go 105 I don't know why that was screwing with me so much Okay. And then Hydra's question is can we do problem being that we run out of space here a little early, although that's not necessarily a problem. I would say, you know, we were building, we were building this thing as a, our own sort of thing. I would probably wrap a helix around the other side. Let me put this back. Okay. So we're gonna call this one. I'm gonna think this is number eleven, and we'll go ahead and yellow gray. I did not do a jungle mouse. I actually I thought about doing that. Um, there's so many varieties you could do. Uh, we started with the the Jipal, uh six ring roller coaster the five inversion one with the triple cork of course the unfortunate thing with the triple cork is that you really can't you need the diagonal corkscrew to make it look halfway decent um, but did that then from there we went to the uh chinese jet coaster so this is the beijing shibo Lai one um which was copied from the version in J from japan um at typically kurosaki that was moved to china so this was copied and cloned twice. From there, we did our standard invert, uh, which is not quite as nice as as I think we'd like to do, or at least not as not quite as matching the real thing. Um, it certainly covers the the jankiness of the real thing, um, and the the video that we watched was was pretty pretty rough. Um, but from there, we moved on to the um, version at Sunak Har Harbin. Uh, up north from Golden Horse, which does use their new track style, so the guide wheels are on the outside, uh, and a layout that I'm assuming is a European uh, or originated in Europe. Uh, six inversions, so actually a pretty nice looking ride. Seems pretty easily smooth from the POV. Uh, haven't seen so many comments on the whole thing so far. 
Uh, but we finished those two and then went into the Changlong Small Roller Coaster, um, which I said is the only one of these that I have actually ridden. Ridden two of these, uh, much to my regret. Um, so very circular loop, almost completely circular. It's a little bit of a shame you can't do that in RCT because it it's pretty pretty rough. Um, then we did the um, super uh, spinning coaster from Golden Horse, which has the uh, Roland version in it. This is more or less a clone of the real thing. I think if we wanted to do it and make it look a little nicer, we could probably introduce some diagonals in there and just make it make the whole thing fit just a little bit better. But not too bad and definitely has that slow roll going on. I can put the Schwarzkopf roll hydro. It, it would look a little bit better, but I think still, still struggling a little bit. And then moved over to the uh, Hebei 11 inversion coaster, which, as you'll notice, is just the Intamin 10 that's got a an extra loop. You know, and that's that's all it is. Just one more loop, and then the whole same layout as before. This one still has yet to open. This is at the same park as. The uh, dive coaster, the, this guy. This is at uh, Xingdong Resort. And this one actually, I feel like, looks the best of all the ones that we did as far as just overall coaster shape goes and um, looking decent in RCT while also looking decent as a real life coaster. Um, I feel like this maybe is the one that looks kind of sort of the closest. We've got four rows like the real thing. We did go vertical. We could, we don't have to do that. We could do it as steep. I did that for the second uh, one here. We're going to have an almost full stop here, get down to our four miles per hour, and then pull off the top. And then lastly, before we got into the extras, we did this one which is based off of the Golden Horse Tilt Coaster that's also at that same park at Xingdong Cultural Resort. And I really like this layout too. Honestly, this layout in is one of my favorites in real life as far as just Chinese coasters go. Like This is one of my favorite looking Chinese coasters. I think the layout looks great. It looks like it'd be a lot of fun. Um, and I would like to get to ride it someday. Hopefully there's a couple of them that are out there in reasonably accessible areas. Although, to be fair, on a train, most China is accessible. And then we built some cursed layouts. We built the uh, uh, Dharma Boundary Coaster, or whatever it's called, uh, and adjusted the mass so it just barely makes it through our cursed Cobra Roll. That was definitely the uh, first ride on uh, of the stream. Plus, then, our uh, weird Golden Horse thing here um, but we'll see what see what it takes but yellow was the color of the day since most of these were ended up being yellow fair amount of, of things there but that is our our nine plus our two uh do we have enough concept art for the flying coaster uh i don't have it on me i actually have it in my iapa brochures um in like my physical brochures the the only other one that I've got is the uh, Golden Horse um, Valair, uh, the Zamperla Flying Coaster knockoff. We we have enough for the Wing Coaster. Uh, we we do have that layout, um, but that's you know pretty pretty simple. Um, I don't know if you were here when I posted that one up earlier, but I can put it up again and. So here we go. This is the uh, Golden Horse Wing Coaster right here. Which actually doesn't look half bad. We'll see how it actually turns out, but it, it could be okay. If we want to zoom in a little bit on the actual layout here. I think could be could be all right but we'll see soon it's going in um it's going in at let me remind myself what it is i think it's tai 
Sideshow. I can find it. Give me one second. But yeah, the, the wing coaster I'm, I'm reasonably interested in, in seeing. Alright, so it is Taijo Zoo. Which is actually not listed in the database yet. But there is meant to be a wing coaster of some variety there. Um... I want to say it's got almost like a cobra roll kind of thing going on there at the at the top, but it, it matches the concept art for the the thing. Uh, let's see here. Let me post it up. So this is the concept art for the park, and you can see here is the concept art, which granted concept art is never very accurate, but this is very, very close to the layout that we just looked at. So it's got the dive drop here, the zero G roll, this thing that looks more like a Cobra roll than anything. So I'll be surprised if it actually is that or if it's more like a dive loop. Then there's the, the roll that was here, then kind of turns and corners here so I'd be really curious to see if they try a Cobra roll in a wing coaster because I feel like that's going to be an awfully tight inversion at the top for a wide train but who knows we'll, we'll see how it goes I think there's a lot of potential opportunity there for decent looking ride and some potential new innovation there if the layout is reasonably interesting um, which it might be but anyway, I think now we will wrap it up, and we're still half an hour early, which is not too, too shabby. Um, but, uh, hi there, Sanjunk. Sorry for uh, the uh, leak going. This is RCT2. Uh, we are just actually wrapping up now, but uh, we will be back again in two weeks for another Andros Amusement Academy here. Um, and uh, we'll see if you have any suggestions for uh, themes for next week. Uh, we've got a um, a couple of thoughts so far. I know we've had some suggestions for, uh, let's see, what do we got? Indoor coasters uh, I've seen. There's a family coaster stream. Uh, I have part two of the uh, weird and obscure coasters. And then also traveling coasters. And then wild mice. Those are kind of the, the five options that I'm thinking of for next time. But we will see. Um, but uh, oh, and forceful, yeah, I've I've seen that one also. Uh, you're curious. I, I think it's very similar, Hydro. Um, the layout looks similar. It, it's at least um, you know reasonably unique, but it's um, it's still very similar to the real thing. I mean, clearly they're using B and M as an inspiration, but I think it's in the same way that the vertical drop coaster, this this guy. I think it's in the same vein as this one where. Yeah, it is a very, very, very heavily inspired by B&M Coaster layout, but it's not a, um, it's not fully a B&M Coaster layout. So I think that's how we'll see the wing coaster, which is honestly not that bad of a deal, I feel like. So who knows? And yeah, Sheep, I would like to do a, a Vacoma Illusion. I think that could be kind of fun there. They're going to be a pain to make in RCT. Just I feel like they don't look good in any kind of fashion. But who knows? We'll, we'll give it a try. But until next time, um, if you guys don't follow me on the YouTube channel, that's where I put all the stream archives and also my RCT2 reviews. Um, so those are all going to go there, as is the hacking tutorials when I get back to those. Uh, we'll be starting a new project here soon that I'm going to stream the whole thing. And I'll put up on YouTube also. That's basically going to go for beginning to end of how to build a you know coaster, including supports and everything else, and all that. So we'll have a good time doing that, hopefully. Um, and then let's see here. What else? Um, 
So I just had a, co a park released this week that I've been working on for two years now. Uh, the uh, My uh, Brazilian park, or uh, Washuzan Park, Rainbow Summit, is based off of Brazilian park, um, Washuzan Highland in Japan. Uh, it is a spotlight winner on New Element, and I'll do a review and stream of that here really soon. Um, I can actually go ahead and uh, pull that one that one up we want just to wrap up with with that and a taste of the review to come what type of coaster are I doing for the design I don't know yet I want to pick something good but I haven't really decided what to do so we'll we'll see all right when this loads all right so this is Washuzan Park Rainbow Summit. This park I started in March 2019, and I have been building on it since. Uh, like I said, it's based off of um, Washuzan Park uh, Brazilian Highland, which is in Okayama. Uh, so it's got all sorts of just interesting realistic details and everything. I don't want to necessarily get into a whole review right now, but some of my favorite bits are the working ultra twister here and uh, also the um the village down below <laughs> when i review my own things i call them just inside look because i feel like that seems less pretentious than doing a review of your own thing but I've had enough people ask for it as far as that goes that I would like to go ahead and do a an inside look as far as just details go and you know little little things that may help improve your realistic parks in the future if you build them such as um, water slides underneath the coast to give you the water sound and things like that so there's there's all sorts of just fun stuff that we can talk through but that will be for another day. So until next time, thank you guys very much for watching. Go follow me on YouTube so you can get the uh, notifications for all that. And uh, follow me here so then you get the go live notifications. Uh, we will hopefully be back in two weeks with another Androsic Amusement Academy stream as we near number 20. So thank you guys for coming and watching today and for the comments and the feedback. And I will talk to you all later. Have a good day. Bye.